Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Supposedly Wonderful Future, where cracks are starting to form, quite literally, in the psyche of our friend Harvey, guys. We found out that all of his memories are pretty much fabricated, and he is an addict to virtual reality. So much so that if he doesn't disconnect soon, it's probably going to kill him. So, uh, let's go ahead and continue this conversation and see where it goes. They could have made everything up, for all I know. There's no problem here, don't you understand? How can there be no problem? Can't you recognize your own symptoms? Just remember how lost and confused you were before. I feel much better now. I'll be alright. I think you know that's not the case. You just refuse to acknowledge it. Look, even if it's true, what other choice do I have? To search for balance, of course. You can probably have your 120 minutes back, just give real life another chance. If you believe life plus, you know that's not true. And if you want me to trust my symptoms, that's not true either. I, I may have an exit now, but if I return here, even months down the road, my brain will relapse. And there'll be no leaving, emotionally or physically. And between the two alternatives, I thought it over and I made my decision. Just please accept it. Please leave me be. All right. Um, did we head down this one before? Oh dear. Have you considered my points? Will you leave now? No, I'm sorry, but I won't. D do you not respect my choice? I do, but I respect your life even more. I'm not going to let you kill yourself. I'm not killing myself. I'm refusing to sacrifice everything in order to save myself. It's just a side effect of my choice. Then there's no choice to be made at all. It's only a realization to have. What realization? That you have a responsibility to live. Responsibility to whom? To your real family and relatives. To your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors. To passerbys and strangers. To the bald guy who uses the same zebra crossing every morning. To everyone you have or will affect. To the world. That's nonsense. Nobody needs me. That's not nonsense. That's life. It's not easy, and it's not clear. But it's meaningful. Boy, there is more meaning than we can handle. There are processes we are yet to begin to understand. Processes that you can still be a part of. There are no processes. Just the same stupid things. They're never the same. They might appear the same, but if you look close enough, they're not. That's the power of our minds to see the real complexity. I, I don't want to look close enough. I'm fine with the complexity I have here. But your time here is so short. Don't you want to see a longer story? Don't you want to explore more? No, please stop. I, I, I can't. I don't want to die, but I can't go back either. Yes, you can. Look, it's scary. I, I forgot how to walk. I forgot how to live. You'll figure it out. The brain adapts, remember? I, I don't want to take the same street again. Then walk a different road, or take a bus, or ride a bike. Your life can be as fresh and exciting as you want it to be. That is something you can do. That is in your power. I... God... P plug me out, now. Whatever you need to give me. Medicine, drugs, brain surgery. Just do it. Quickly, before I change my mind. Oh crap. 
Hey! Colors? Good. Harvey? There is no answer. I guess they responded to his request. I should probably signal for extraction, too. Oh, we can see all the col- Oh, all the pictures in color. Hold on. I want to see the- Oh, we can't. Boo. Oh, well. All right. Beam me up, Scotty. That took a very interesting turn. Hey, Michael. I... <laughs> I don't even have the energy to be mad at you anymore. I guess that was part of the plan. <laughs> I hope you understand why this was necessary, though. Why we didn't wait for you to wake up and connect to VR the usual way. Yeah. You wanted me to have a similar experience. Exactly. To learn that somebody is living inside virtual reality is one thing. But to try it yourself, to understand how real it feels to him, there's no briefing for that. But why is an easy part? I'm more interested in how. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I wasn't sure it would work. But I'm glad it did. Is it some kind of crazy new technology? Simulations directly inside your head? More like a crazy natural phenomenon. It was an ordinary VR set, the same one you used yesterday. All we did was quietly slip it on your head at night. Your brain did the rest. You fell asleep in the real world, so it assumed you woke up in the real world as well. A brain can be fooled this easily, huh? It happens very rarely, mind you, and is yet to be properly studied, but it's a thing. Other recognized factors include feeling physically or emotionally tired and being unaccustomed to VR experience, both of which apply in your case. So even my exhaustion is an opportunity to you. A good manager should see absolutely everything as an opportunity, don't you think? Ooh, that's kind of Machiavellian. What if it hadn't worked? Then we would have explained the situation to you and proceeded into VR conventionally, even if it meant less chance to relate and emphasize. It was too late to change the entire problem, of course. You snuck into my room at night. Just like that? Yep. Me and two technicians you saw down below yesterday. It sounds creepy when I say it. I really apologize for violating your personal space. W weren't you afraid to wake me up? Of course. The whole experiment was relying on our little nighttime shtick, and we didn't even know how much of a sensitive sleeper you are. I suppose we could have used a sedative to put you in a deeper sleep, but that's just unethical. No. I counted on the natural sedative effect of other things. You know, things I've been bothering you with for the past four days. Yeah, it's unethical. Absolutely. Ugh. What about Mr. Mart- or what about Mr. Martin? Did he trick himself in a similar way? Sort of. His case was more like continuous deterioration than sudden confusion. He worked at our energy division for 12 years. A quiet, introspective guy, always doing what he's asked, never complaining. Until he decided to leave. The rest you already know from the recording of his recent conversation with our workers. I'm curious if this was just to get a resource back into the company. Does, does he live alone? Yes. He was raised in an orphanage, and he's never been in a relationship. He has a small apartment in Montreal. It belongs to the company, and he retains it indefinitely as a severance benefit. Shouldn't he have run out of food or drowned in trash? It's all automated these days. You can program your fridge to never run out of ingredients, scheduling drone deliveries through a special delivery entrance so you don't even have to answer the door. Your oven will take care of any simple recipe, and cleaning is also not an issue. You don't have to go out or interact with anyone at all, as long as you have enough money. And money is usually not a problem for someone who's worked at Life Plus for 12 years. What a time to be a shut-in. 
It's a legitimate problem that's never really got solved. Social uncertainty and pressure are rising while entertainment industry keeps coming up with more and more engaging and exquisite fiction. He may be uncommon in completely erasing the line between virtual and real, but in terms of sheer desire to escape Harvey's case, or to escape, Harvey's case is far from unique. This reminds me of that group in uh, of young people in Japan. I forgot the name right off the top of my head, but they're the ones who pretty much do this exact same thing. They kind of shut off the real life and just vanish into the internet. How did you know that something was wrong with him? Simple. Online history. Remember our monitoring system? We thought it was glitching. For real. How can someone stay constantly active in VR services for 22 hours a day? But the human mind keeps surprising us, both with its fragility and flexibility. You mean he wasn't sleeping at all? I think he was trying to sleep as little as possible, taking short naps throughout the day at irregular intervals. That's pretty hard to notice using online records. A tribe in the Amazon jungle sleeps like this, or people in the military when under extreme circumstances, but not regular folks. I'm sure his mind welcomed this hazy state of constant sleep deprivation. It was helping to erase the line. Did he cooperate after that conversation? Yes, and was very helpful. We couldn't have constructed the simulation without him. Everyone involved saw how much he cherished those memories. You kind of tricked him into agreeing, though. True. I'm not proud of that, but I think it was necessary. He couldn't be convinced conventionally. Not from the real world, anyway. So what's the deal with the special effects? The black and white recordings? The, the cracks? Just a little something to enhance the experience. The idea was to make your conversation about his favorite VR simulations more like a story-driven simulation in itself. I don't know if it did any good in the end, but it was worth a shot. So, just that we're clear, there was no tragedy in 2036, right? Oh, the asteroid part? That was simply a disaster movie material. The real Apophis safely passed by, by both in 2029 and 2036, just as it was estimated decades ago. And even if a thing like that was about to hit Earth, the exact location of the impact would be known weeks or months in advance, giving plenty of time to evacuate and minimize damage. I mean, there are definitely cosmic events that can badly screw us up despite all preparations, but a 300 meter long asteroid is not one of them. What about the part where his brain was suffering and he could turn into a vegetable? Because he was questioning it. What do you think? No. Knowing you, it's probably as accurate as it gets. It is. This was the conclusion of our best medical professionals. They're not always right, but they're most likely right. We definitely had to act. So you wanted me to bring him back to the real world. And you succeeded. Thanks to you, his life doesn't have to end now. He has many more years of experience ahead. It won't be only positive experience, but it will be a fulfilling one nonetheless, I'm sure of it. But that's just one layer of the story. The other layer is where I simply wonder, is it such a bad thing to seek what he sought? Yeah, I wonder about it myself. It's peculiar, isn't it? All this man wanted is to squeeze more meaning out of his days. At the same time, here we are, giving you a taste of the future with the juiciest and most dramatic problems I could find because experiencing the same through routine would be too slow. A somewhat similar goal, don't you think? That's a bit of a forced analogy, though. Too slow is not the main reason. You, you've got many other factors to worry about. Still, I can't help but put this situation into a broader context. I mean, just tell me, hypothetically. If there were no mental damage to suffer, no side effects to worry about, would you do the same? Would you choose a constructed reality over this one? Hmm. Probably not completely, no. If I had two realities, I'd want to explore both of them equally. I'm greedy like that. 
I think that's a good kind of greed. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with me. What happens with Martin now? We keep helping him, of course. Or at least we stay close to be available whenever he accepts our help. Getting back to reality won't be an easy task. Eventually, we'll be glad to have him back as an employee, but we won't abandon him either way. So, we consider the problem solved then? Yeah, I think we're done for the day. Four down, only one more to go. Just one more day of working together then, huh? Actually, I was about to mention that. In a stunning turn of events, I won't be your manager tomorrow. You'll be solving the last problem together with our CEO. Oh, right. You did say something like that earlier. You don't have to worry about it for now, though. Right now, we are due for some downtime. You can get comfortable and have a good rest. See you later. So we're coming close to the final mission, hmm? Fruit. Getting all of those vitamins. Okay. Well, let us see what is on the internets. Because technically we did miss a night. So I would assume if that was the case, then... Would have two? Oh yeah, we have two. Hold up. What is... Oh, can, can we not look at the other ones? Boo! Wait, wait a minute. There we go. Wait, we're unemployed, but that's okay. Tasteful museums? Oh, okay, we have seen that one. That was Wednesday. And here's Thursday. Okay, well, let me go ahead and read these over, and I'll let you guys know kind of the uh, sum up. I and mean, we may even read one if it's that interesting. All right, some very interesting things in here. Um, the first one is called Back to the Numbers. World Summit attendees reflect on the state of the world. So there's the UN World Summit in Berlin, and everyone's talking about how much the world has changed, how much you know, poverty has gone away, and um, diseases have disappeared, violence has gone down, but still there is a lot of apprehension that the world is actually worse. So 35% of people today believe that the world is actually getting worse, not better, because of so many different changes to things that have defined us forever, while another 20% feel that the good fortune will not last. So definitely much like the um, achievement I got when I read the final article, it is a complicated mess. Um, here is a new story about them drilling into the ocean, into the mantle, and basically all the geology projects, um, both on the ground and underwater. So going a little bit Sea Lab here, or um, SeaQuest DSV, which is interesting. And on the opposite side of that spectrum, they're talking about the first manned mission to Mars, which won't last, which won't launch until at least 2053. Um, which, judging from the kind of work that I do in real life, I can tell you that is such a long way off right now. Because, and they're talking about um, bumbling into small things when they run simulations. They just they don't want to take any chances, pretty much. And they're a public frustration about that. So let's go ahead and I mean they're just talking about it and here's the thing there's little scientific value in sending humans to Mars agrees Frederick Rangan professor of theoretical physics which is kind of true it's just it's that whole thing why do you climb a mountain because it's there but the one that I wanted to read to you guys is this because it, it's very it's it's very telling of the kind of world that we live in now how mass surveillance silently won by Hethelo Black. Ever hear of Big Brother? There was this book written by a guy almost a hundred years ago, and he was one of the characters. He turned into quite a symbol, a synonym, a synonym for abuse of power, a boogeyman for adults. He was like an evil mastermind, constantly plotting in secret to steal away our democratic freedoms. People would mention Big Brother when their civil liberties were being violated, like too many cameras on the street or too much personal data gathered online or some other totalitarian smell in the air. And that was quite some time ago. These days, nobody's afraid of Big Brother anymore. These days, 
were basically pals. Looking back at it, you might rightfully wonder, why on earth did we befriend someone like this? Isn't privacy a good thing? Don't we need personal space to live normal lives? Do we really want corporations and governments to trace our every step? Why would we just ignore the warnings of the writer? Perhaps we were tricked to do so. Perhaps this is some kind of conspiracy. A plan carefully executed by vile men who rule us from the shadows. Alas, my friend, you're wrong. Like, can you imagine that a mere 40 years ago, the online world was a cradle of anonymity? We talked on forums and image boards using nicknames and avatars, and there was no way to figure out who we are in real life or where we live. Do you know that as far as technical capabilities go, the last part is still true? That's right. The basic technology remains unchanged. To this day, it is impossible to reliably pinpoint your physical location based on the traces of your online presence. Unless, of course, you voluntarily disclose identifying information. The internet just wasn't designed with mass surveillance in mind. But that's not a problem anymore, is it? When social networks arrived, they offered us something clearly superior. To unload our photos and talk using real names with people who live nearby anyway. Anonymity was branded as a domain of bullies and trolls. An inherently dangerous condition that can only bring out the worst in people. Your online account should look like passports, they said. Unified, secure, reliable, and oh so very, very real. And like passports, they are passports, they are now. Who needs complicated engineering solutions when you can just convince people to play along? Wait. Did I say convince people? I'm sorry, that's not entirely accurate. That implies someone on the outside, like Big Brother, was influencing our opinion and steering it in the right direction. And sadly, that's not the case. There was, of course, a small matter of those who didn't bother using the internet and therefore was immune to tracking, but the Internet of Things certainly re uh, rectified this issue. It's not that everything is online. Everything is seamlessly online. A small microchip on a bus can log commute habits of every passenger, but nobody is obligated to advertise its presence. That old school grumpy grandpa who lives next door to you might think he has his privacy intact, but corporations can see his every step just the same. A lot of the time, people are not even aware that they're connected to the network, but they are. We are always connected. There's no escape. Here's a funny thing. There was this other guy who once leaked classified information about his government's exercises in global monitoring. He pointed out that, ironically, those exercises were fairly useless in terms of practical benefits, like they didn't help to fight terrorism or improve day-to-day -day safety of the citizens, because there was no way to separate valuable clues from useless noise. The agency in question was just hoarding personal data, like a dragon from a fairy tale, but it didn't have algorithms sophisticated enough to properly analyze it. Edward Snowden Being a good big brother is hard work, you know? It's not enough to spy. You also need to process your findings. And even if somebody can do it on a national scale, doing it worldwide is a whole different matter. The infrastructure alone would give you a headache, but hey, good news. It's 30 years later, and we can finally congratulate the powers that be on the job well done. Did you know that Life Plus has a giant database that contains personal information on almost every single human being on this planet? Stored on a server farm somewhere? You probably do, it's not even a secret. It logs your every action, from the moment you're born to the day you die. It records every conversation you have, and then assigns it two IDs for quick future reference. Screw top secret military bases and nuclear weapon storage sites. This is the most secure facility in the world. This is where the big guns are. It's not easy to maintain this database, of course. There are hundreds of amazing software engineers working day and night, typing away at their keyboard projections, designing incredibly complicated algorithms. They don't think they're doing anything wrong. They don't laugh maniacally like comic book villains either. They do it for our own safety and security, to maintain order and peace. You probably think it's not their fault. Clearly, those ordinary folks are being brainwashed and manipulated just like the rest of us, oblivious to the vile implications of their state-of-the-art programming. Don't blame them. Blame Big Brother, you say. You are, yet again, wrong. It's not like I told you anything secret. Like, 
Yeah, Life Plus is understandably sketchy on the details, but it's not classified information. That's the best part. People know all this, and they are totally cool with it. 30 years ago, everyone would have freaked out, but not today. There's been a fundamental shift in conscious, or conscience. You might want to call this shift orchestrated. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. Do you know why you're always wrong? Because there's no big brother. There never was. It's all made up. It's a non-existent entity brought up to justify things we don't approve but secretly still want. It's easy to blame stuff on a handful of powerful individuals, but the truth is we, the masses, wished for it all along. Evil geniuses do not operate in a vacuum. They're just a reflection of our collective insanity. So if you want to take away one thing, take this. We lost our privacy because it's just too bloody convenient. There was no conspiracy, no manipulation, and no trickery. Nobody forced you into giving up your democratic freedoms, and nobody took away your God-given rights. We threw them away ourselves. We wanted our everyday life to be more easy and comfortable, and we made it so, and damn the consequences. And it's the consequences we have to live with. I thought that was a really interesting essay because it is really kind of mirroring a lot of things happening on the internet right now. And the thing about it is I could see that happening in 30 years. I could see that this happening in less than 30 years to tell you the God's honest. And that both fascinates and terrifies me. So, okay. Well then, um, if we, if we don't talk to our friend tomorrow, then that means we need to go ahead and talk to her right now. Is she, is she hanging out here? Oh, different pose. All right. Well, I guess we will have, I, I guess, maybe the last chat with Jackie in the beginning of the next episode. I'm not sure, but I did really want to share. Oh, we can't even click on the coffee. But we will um, talk to her and I guess hopefully afterwards start our final problem guys I just really wanted to share that article with you I found it very interesting but if you guys like the episode please leave a like down below subscribe to the channel leave a comment that'd be a big help and we'll see you next time later days everyone <laughs>